Okay. Afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to share with you some experiences of shooting and recording documentaries from some of the most remote and hostile places in the world. Um, I started off uh, in the BBC Science and Features kind of 20 years ago, and the only way to work on productions then was to have a full-blown crew shooting on 16 mil and having a sound recordist that would record onto a Nagra. In the last 20 years, the in industry has changed massively, and what I've tried to do is adopt a range of different production techniques to help me as an embedded director cameraman to deliver top-end broadcast quality images and most importantly audio and when I say most importantly so often overlooked for a director cameraman and can I just gauge the audience please and who's a who's a camera shooter or a PD shooter or who picks up a camera and shoots themselves so basically a lot of the issues who's a sound recordist ah right so I'm gonna get a good proper grilling aren't I? <laughs> so from the perspective, I've got a number of camera rigs, and it's very much as a, as a lone operator. Um, if we want to take this further, we can talk about it offline. What I'm trying to do is keep the talk down to about 45 minutes. We'll have a Q&A session, but if we want an extended Q&A session, I'm happy uh, to take it onto either the Rycote stand or to the uh, Sennheiser stand. So, most people have a uniform for work. This is, this is my uniform. And I've got to look after myself, but I've also got to look after my kit. And sometimes when I'm operating in these conditions, I need the most simple rig I can find. It needs to be dependable, it needs to be simple, and it needs to be affordable. And what I mean by affordable, it has to be good value for money. So I'm not looking for the cheapest kit if I'm going on a low, lower budget production shooting for the web. My thing is always a matter of investing in the appropriate kit for the job. This is my office. And unfortunately, in most locations that I'm working, I can't just pick up the phone and get a piece of kit, biked across town and swap it out. The last production I was working on was following the team of international scientists on the Catlin Arctic Survey. This is the frozen Arctic Ocean. And uh, in order just to get to our start point, uh, the budget for the flight was 98,000 US, Can uh, 98,000 Canadian dollars, sorry. So I've got no chance of swapping kit out. So I have to make appropriate equipment selections before I set out. So this is what I decided to take on this job. I was shooting on the Canon XF100s and the small XA10s. And I, at that time, Sennheiser had just brought out a little, a little 8060, I don't know if you've seen it, a shorter shotgun. And it seems to be, I've done tests subsequently, seems to be significantly more forgiving for recording off access sound. The, so the ME66 is the kind of thing that I started using uh, on my BBC DV days uh, and it's a tried and tested piece of kit and it's something that I trust and I think that's the thing is that if you're looking to step out of your comfort zone and through my work I'm asked to regularly step out my comfort zone even though I've got used to working in these hostile environments if you do that you need a piece of kit that you're going to trust so I'm happy to test new bits of kit but I'll always revert back to what I'm happy with and then uh, my old set of headphones. I haven't really changed these in years. These are bits of falling off them. Still do the job. I can still repair the sides. Tried and trusted. So I've always tried to monitor, or if I'm not listening to it, I'll always see it in camera. This was the team I was uh, recording. And on the left there, you've got Ann Daniels, a very respected international polar uh, guide. She also happens to be a mum of four. Uh, in the middle, you've got uh, Adrian McCannum, uh, an Australian 
scientific researcher, and then Tyler Fish on the right. And it was my job to tell their story. And the way I was shooting was all top mics. So I'd elected to take out two radio mics, and in the first trials I had, I was at, they worked very well. So it wasn't an issue over the microphones not working. It was just actually the mechanics of telling their story. And what I try and do is go back to the fundamentals of storytelling, and then again choose the appropriate equipment to do that. And I found working in this really challenging environment, I'm just going to play this, and it'll give you a feel for how difficult it was to operate in these conditions. So here I am on the edge of the Arctic Ocean. The ambient high temperatures minus 32. Uh, we've got a very strong wind blowing, and the wind chill is down to minus 50. And as I'm thinking, the are actually beginning to freeze up. But in these extreme conditions, I'm attempting to make a film about the Catlin Arctic Survey. Uh, the Catlin Arctic Survey is an international, multidisciplinary scientific expedition. It's a unique expedition bringing together adventurers and scientists. And the idea is to go out onto the Arctic Ocean from the geographic North Pole measuring the sea ice thickness uh, and looking at the salinity and the density and uh, gathering a whole load of other data about the Arctic environment, about the Arctic Ocean. And to record this and to document it, uh, I've chosen to use the Canon XF100. Uh, this little beauty uh, weighs just over a kilogram. And the reason I'm taking such a small camcorder is because I'm going to have to pull the entire lot, all my filming equipment with me, in a sledge in a port behind me. Going back to the camcorder, it records onto solid state compact flashcards. One of the benefits of that is that it actually reduces power consumption. There are no moving parts in the camera, unlike tape driven cameras. And, uh, one of the extraordinary things is it records full 50 megabits a second HD video. So what I'm attempting to do is be one of the first embedded director cameramen operating at the North Pole and operating in such extreme and challenging conditions. Um, I'm going to have to put my uh, big mitten back on. So as I was saying... Current air temperature is minus 32. The wind chill is down to minus 50. Uh, and I'm trying to minimize the amount of exposed skin that's there uh, so I can operate. The camera is seems to be working pretty well in these extreme conditions. And, uh, sorry, my eyes are freezing up. Uh, the camera might be working, but my eyes are not. Um, so, I've got the unit, I've got the camcorder, let's start again. Yeah, I'm good. redefines the idea of warming up but what I was trying to do there that was a piece for the Canon Professional Network it was uh, their website it was a feedback for that those sound recordists amongst you will say well there's quite a bit of audible wind noise there actually the deal was and I was required to deliver real raw and authentic material from the ice for the website so 
if, we, if we're looking at the cut-off points for full broadcast, you think that's a bit rough and ropey. But actually, we wanted some Atmos, and it was a quick turnaround. On that, I was actually, I'd, I'd configured that as a sole operator. I'd put my little XA-10 um, on a tripod and shooting as wide as I could using the flip-out screen and just sh literally shouting into it. But as you were seeing, my skin, my flesh was going opaque. So I couldn't actually expose my mouth. So when you're trying to do a piece to camera and not having your, your mouth exposed, it's a bit of a non-starter. Well, it seemed to work. Um, you know, the, it's up to you guys. But actually, well, the response that they got from the website was it's like, Christ, this guy is actually out there doing his job. And that's what we we're trying to convey. So what I've learned from that, depending on my client's needs, I kind of, I'll talk to them before, and when I talked to the exec producer before I went out to the Arctic, I was shooting crisp, clean sound for broadcast. But for the behind the scenes stuff, for the web was quite a different matter. One other consideration, yeah, I, I used it. No, I, I used a, a, a separate gun mic. So uh, I, I used a ME66. So, yeah, on the XA10. Um, one of the other considerations that I've got is the robustness of the kit and how lightweight it is. And there were only pre production models available of the little 8060 uh, when I went out to the Geographic North Pole last February uh, but I've subsequently started testing this and it seems to be it fits perfectly for such small cameras the mic's got a small footprint the camera's got a small footprint and actually using the suspension system what I tend to do is twist it over so I'm actually in line with, uh, with my camera and then put in a softy over the top it actually works really nicely and it seems to be so much more forgiving a mic there and then the ME66 which I've used where you've really got to record down the axis and the nice thing is it's quite a bit smaller quite a bit lighter so what I can do on, a, on those jobs is actually afford to take a spare in many instances I've just got to go with the kit that I've got and that's where it comes to be out and out dependency and here I'm in the tent I had to capture um, good quality recordings of what was going on, uh, the cooking at minus 52 Celsius, how we're actually coping and surviving in those conditions. Um, and the mic, I, I tested a number of different types of mics just for a few days. I'd use this little Bayer Dynamic. I still prefer the, the other mics, but it, it kind of seemed to perform okay because I just go through a, a, a whole bunch of kit when I'm starting out on these productions, just beginning to evaluate what seems to work, what manages better in the adverse conditions. Um, big game changer for me was to be able to record solid state on the camera. And I, you've probably found as well that solid state handheld recorders. So uh, I've just been introduced to the little Nagra SD recorder and it's built like a, a brick barn. It's, it's a really nice little solid unit and on the next job I'm about to do I'll be taking one of those. Um, and just working in hostile and harsh environments to be able to record onto as you can see here compact flash or SD card it for me is an absolute game, game changer. Um, just coming back to so that's on this production that's how I looked day in day out. Um, I'm protecting myself, but as you can see really, I didn't really protect the cameras. What I did do each and every night is strip everything down. So I use a paintbrush, bog standard one from home base, something like that, for a quid. Sip off the end so I've got a bit of a diagonal going across it, and just use that to brush out all the ice, dust, and sometimes the snow. And I literally strip the kit apart, um, and then put it into a dry bag and that goes inside my sleeping bag because at minor, below minus 40 there were, uh, we were even having problems with the sensors I just want to share with you it was a really record breaking expedition um, I managed to break two records on this trip one for 
wearing my underwear the longest. I managed to make 47 days without a single change.